we want to know what the indian government is going to do yes. about this resolution we want to, we want to know just one minute please one minute we want an answer from the honorable prime minister whether government of india is going to support this resolution okay dr metre whether it's a upa ally or a rival the demand from tamil nadu's political forces is united what crimes are human rights violations in sri lanka New Delhi must vote against Colombo at the UNHRC and favor the US backed war crimes resolution on Sri Lanka. But in the midst of the domestic political ruckus, New Delhi still seems indecisive and concerned about the diplomatic fallout. Please, I urge the Prime Minister, please, so open your silence and say something on this issue. To calm the Tamil temper, the Prime Minister wrote a letter to Karunanidhi in which he said, and I quote, With regard to the resolution in United Nations Human Rights Council, we are engaged with all parties in an effort to achieve an outcome that is forward-looking and ensures that rather than deepening confrontation and mistrust, a way forward is found. What view on this issue will be taken will be determined as and when the time will be finalized in respect of the meeting of the Human Rights Commission. but the political fire in tamil nadu is fueled further by these pictures showing the bullet ridden body of 12 year old balachandran the son of slain ltte chief vellupillai prabhakaran allegedly killed by sri lankan forces it's part of several alleged war crime videos from the last days of the war against the ltte while colombo has denied the allegations the focus back home is on the stand new delhi will take with veera raghav in new delhi minakshi upreeti Meanwhile the Sri Lankan High Commissioner to India Prasad Karyavasam spoke to CNN IBN senior editor Suhasni Heather a short while ago he discredited the channel for video claiming it was concocted Parliament has been adjourned over uh, over India's vote at the Human Rights Council and MPs are demanding very clearly that the government actually vote against Sri Lanka when if that vote comes up next week your reaction to that It's very unfortunate that Tamil Nadu parliamentarians have uh, chosen to disturb the August Parliament of India for something very simple uh, that uh, they have perhaps been totally ill-informed, misinformed by whoever who has uh, briefed them about Sri Lanka situation, especially since none of these parliamentarians have not visited Sri Lanka in, in the re- in the recent past. How do you refute that kind of video evidence? It is concocted, uncorroborated. and unsubstantiated it is it is produced in channel 4 in london and this is time to bring disrepute and take vitiate the atmosphere in terms of human rights council meeting in geneva but we have we are concerned about human rights of our people we are investigating on our own we have appointed lessons learned and reconciliation commission and they have come up with uh, recommendations as to how we should proceed and we will proceed on that basis why don't you say that you will investigate a photograph of a minor being killed in that way sure we will but we are we have not been given the footage that is the problem we should have been this footage should have been first placed before the government of sri lanka and for us to examine the pressure is certainly building on dr manmohan singh's government uh, you've been meeting officials in the government have you been given any assurances of how india might vote if this comes to a vote at the human rights Council? india is our closest neighbor closest friend india is a responsible uh, re- not only regional but responsible world power they will take the right decision at the right time the resolution that has come to the human rights council very simply asked the sri lankan government to implement what its own llrc the lessons learned and reconciliation committee has actually put into its report why the opposition why the resistance to a resolution that's very simply saying implement your own reconciliation commission we should be allowed time and space to Im- space to implement our own our own um, our own uh, recommendations we need time to study we have done with things very fast we have resettled 300000 people in one and a half years nobody has done that there is no reason for in international community to get involved in our, our implementation until we are given time to implement it Okay the Sri Lankan High Commissioner speaking exclusively to CNN and IBN the big question atrocities against Tamils in Lanka can India afford to be silent that's our talking point tonight And joining me now V Narayan Swami Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office Subramaniam Swami President of the Janata Party Father Gaspar Raj 
social, social researcher and someone who has been a supporter of the Sri Lankan Tamil cause, KC Singh, former diplomat joining us here and Veera Raghav, senior editor CNN IBN who tracks southern India very closely for us. First to you Mr. Narayan Swami, it seems that the Indian government at the moment wants to sit on the fence on the Sri Lankan issue. You don't want to outrightly condemn the government of Rajapaksha because of diplomatic factors, but at the same time, you want to play lip service to the Tamil cause because of political pressures. You're sitting on the fence. No, it is not like that. The Indian government has to see what kind of resolution that is coming before the committee. In fact, as far as our Indian government is concerned, we are keenly watching the resolution that is coming there. Only after going through the resolution, Indian government can take a position. Because we cannot half hand without seeing the resolution. Because the draft resolution which has been circulated, ultimately when it comes before the discussion and thereafter when amendments are being given there, ultimately what is the final resolution Mr. that has to be seen before the government of India to take a position Mr. Narayan Swami, let me quote what the Prime Minister says. He says, with regard to resolution in UN Human Rights Council, we are engaged with all parties in an effort to achieve an outcome that is forward-looking and ensures that rather than deepening confrontation and mistrust, a way forward is found. To my mind, it's a classic way of saying we haven't made up our mind. We don't know what to do. This is a classic example no, no, of the right. government not willing to no, commit no, no, itself. No. We are showing those horrible pictures that are coming in from Sri Lanka. Surely the Indian government wants to take a stronger stand? No, no. I say I am very sorry about it because uh, they, they, as far as our government is concerned, we are committed to the condemning any kind of human rights violation. Even on as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, when LLRC gave its finding, the Sri Lankan government has been asked to implement that. They have not implemented within the stipulated time. Therefore, the resolution is coming. As far as the you know, UN resolution is concerned, yes. because we cannot talk like a political party as a go responsible government unless until the, the wordings of the resolution is seen, okay. the government of India cannot say anything on that. This is the clear position. Okay. But our government, our, uh, one, one minute, our government is committed to the Sri Lankan Tamil scars. Okay, no, and we, we have been do, doing lot of development activities for the welfare of the Tamil population in Sri Lanka. But you are waiting, you are waiting for the wording, the I, you are waiting for the wording of the resolution. Subramaniam Swami, you have been very critical of the LTT in the past. Has the time though come to take a hard look at the war crimes committed by the Sri Lankan government as well? Dr. Subramaniam Swami? Can you hear me, Dr. Swami? Yes, very clearly now. Dr. Swami, you've been critical of the LTT in the past. Has the time come to take a hard look at the war crimes committed by the Sri Lankan government as well? I think the time for hard look is uh, how to ensure the, uh, the security of the Tamil people in Sri Lanka by having a devolution of the in the constitution, and uh, it is that which should uh, receive our focus. What about war crimes and I human rights violations? Any... What about war crimes and human well, rights uh, violations, uh, well, Dr. Swami? Uh, that is your CNN, IBN in inference from whatever little uh, has come out in terms of uh, videos elsewhere which we don't know what the authenticity is. Are you saying the there have been no is, war crimes? Been to Sri Lanka. Are you saying there have been no war crimes and I, human rights violations in Sri Lanka? I, I am saying that the within the context of a war with the terrorist forces and their capacity to use civilians as a bodyguard, uh, the uh, amount of war, war crimes, alleged war crimes is what has happened in other places elsewhere. Okay. And it ha is also what we are accused of in Kashmir and Manipur. Okay, Father Gaspar Raj, as a Tamil sympathizer, respond to what you've just heard Dr. Swami say. There are those who will say that those who live by the sword will die by it. The LTT was a terrorist group. It killed hundreds of innocents during the war years. Now you cannot get up and suddenly say there are human rights violations that are being committed against the LTT. As Dr. Swami says, tomorrow that might be well said about the lashkar e Toiba or any insurgent terrorist group. 
See, whatever happens to the resolution on March 19, but the world accepts today that serious human rights violations did take place in Sri Lanka and they, were, they could amount to crimes against humanity. I think, um, I, I don't even want to respond to Mr. Subramaniam Swami because there is a global consensus that human rights violations and crimes against humanity were committed in, in Sri Lanka. There is also a consensus, there is also that. a consensus, sir, that a terrorist is a terrorist. There is also a consensus. No one will justify human rights violations, but there are all, there is also a, a consensus that a terrorist can no longer be called a freedom fighter. Rajdeep, nobody condones acts of terrorism if it were if it were committed by LTTE. Yes, nobody condones violence. But then you know the the violence unleashed by the Sri Lankan government against the Tamils were very systemic, systematic, and programmed. And no one would expect a government to you know gather a people, 300,000 people in one place and and unleash aerial bombardment and unlimited um, shelling of the areas, denying food, medicine. And there is a there is a report by the United Nations. Secretary right. General's report. Do you say that? I mean, we can't accept any any report by the globally credible agencies, including the UN Secretary General's panel report, okay. which, which clearly indicates that serious violations took place. And how can we say that? Okay. How can we say that? that uh, I mean, okay, because your point terrorists were carrying arms your and the illegitimate is taken. government your point, all. Your point is taken. Let yeah. me come to KC Singh. KC Singh, does India have any real choice here but to walk a tightrope? We can't really create a confrontational situation, surely, with <coughs> Colombo at this stage. Uh, Rajdeep, a country has to generate choices. I think we are acting out of reflexes. You have seen on Libya we were wrong. Uh, we went and voted against the resolution and you see where Gaddafi is. On Syria we kind of dithered but we were saved by Russia and China. Uh, now India has to really uh, decide what exactly, how it wants to be received in the Committee of Nations as a country that on specific issues, which not only are issues which are brought in by UN or by the West, but can be traced to our own heritage and our own culture, uh, whether it's Buddhism or our own past or in terms of Ahimsa, in terms of Mahatma Gandhi, that human rights are something which are cherished in India. So human and rights are just as universal. Humanitarian, humanitarian values, human rights are very... Now, if we come to this particular problem, 2009, it's been three years. Why is this suddenly a big noise being made by parties in Tamil Nadu? Same DMK had abandoned Vaiko had gone without them in 2009, they won the election, they were quite busy to go along with the central government. Uh, the UN Secretary General set up a separate committee of three experts who went into everything but the Sri Lankan government fully did not fully cooperate with them. The Sri Lankan government on their own set up their own commission, the LLRC. It's the Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission. Now the truth lies somewhere between the two. The UN experts are saying that at the very least, they are, not, they are not saying whether somebody is guilty or not guilty. They said at the very least, an independent international inquiry is called for. You're that saying is what they are saying. Okay, you are saying at least a minimalistic stand needs to be taken by India now. But Veera Raghav, can this blow up on the face of the central government or are the Tamil parties also playing to the gallery? A video comes out after months, suddenly they protest, who knows, life will return to normal. They too seem to be playing to a gallery, to a particular constituency. To be fair, Rajdeep, the issue has been kept alive by those who have been fighting it at the UNHRC, at the diaspora level in terms of the Tamil community. As far as Tamil political parties are concerned, yes, Sri Lanka is an issue that is often taken up when there is a political need for it. You look at the DMK, well, yes, they need to have a political revival in Tamil Nadu. You've seen Jayalalitha take a strong anti-LTT stand in the past, but after the Tamil issue erupted in 2009, you saw her taking a very strong anti-Colombo stand as far as her political selling point is concerned. So expecting this to emerge into an issue which can break an alliance at the center may be a little far-fetched to think of it, but we must also realize that there is a core constituency which is of hardliners. It right. may be a very minor, minor constituency, but that's a very important constituency you know, in Tamil Nadu. It is an important constituency, but Mr. Narayan Swami, you come from Puducherry. Will it become even more difficult for leaders like you your allies from Tamil Nadu, if the government doesn't take a firm position on war crimes and human rights violations in Sri Lanka against Tamils, will your position become difficult? No, as far as uh, the, the issue relating to the human rights violation there and uh, killing of innocent people by the Sri Lankan army, if it is proved, definitely the one has to support that. And from my side, I would like to say, during parliament election 2009, 
the so called uh, the political parties in tamil nadu some of the small parties they put up a video about the atrocities uh, they on on the on the on the ltte uh, but, but you know it did not cut much eyes there but one thing is very clear because the, there should be a subtle distinction between the innocent sri lankan people and the terrorist group of ltte right. because as a political party the national political party that is congress party we will never compromise on the assassination of our leader rajiv gandhi by this terrorist ltte group right so opposed that to that organization and you know what you're saying one make a distinction as as you're the, saying make a distinction between innocent tamils and those who are part of the ltte's war force you're saying make that distinction yeah okay yeah dr that, that, swami that, that, no, no, one more point because therefore therefore yes. our government our honorable prime minister our upa chairperson they are kind enough to extend all support to the sri lankan government right. financially and also the power project railway project housing construction our foreign minister point there, taken we are giving point lot of taken. money you are saying you are developing the your, tamil, tamil your point area. is taken sir your point is taken let me come to dr subramaniam swami swami dr swami leaders like yourself are you isolated today within tamil nadu on the question of the sri lankan tamils or as veera raghav suggests it's only a minority voice which is vocal about the fact that they would like to come out openly and support the ltt there are majority of of tamils are concerned about human rights violations but will make a distinction between ltt and innocent tamils well uh, on the 11th of february i addressed a meeting in uh, madurai which is one of the largest ever held in that site and uh, i spoke about this and i said that we are indians first and tamils second and there was wild cheering I don't think these uh, LTT types who parade them themselves as pro human rights have uh, cut much eyes. But how do you then explain they the fact uh, that part, how do you explain the fact that parties like the DMK, the AIDMK, which have large support, have taken up this course? Whether it is that of uh, well, you see, as far as, as far, uh, yeah, I know what you are saying. As far as DMK is concerned, it is actually an assault on their ideology, which is separateness. Dravidian uh, separateness, which is a non-existent concept, because there is no such thing as a racial Dravidian. And uh, as far as Jayalita is concerned, she is just chicken, and she has taken the stand because our party is supported by uh, these Dravidian elements. Okay. The Dravidian uh, movement uh, uh, elements. Veena Raghav, rather. you want to quickly respond? So, uh, to Dr. I don't Veena Raghav wants to respond to you, sir. Hold Do on, Dr. Dr. Swami. Dr. Yes. Swami, in as much as you want to discredit the LTT, at the end of the day, is it at all possible? to distinguish between the sri lankan tamil cause and the sentiment we speak about from an indian point of view and to those pro ltt sympathizers yes we can distinguish between the war crimes that were committed as a thing of the past and an in uh, sense of justice being delivered to the process of rehabilitation in sri lanka but is it possible to distinguish between the pro ltt voices and those who are championing the sri lankan tamil cause This is the only way of doing that is for the government of India to move a substitute resolution in the UN High, uh, 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 Human Rights Commission to say that the the uh, Committee of Nations calls upon the President uh, Rajapaksa to immediately devolve the constitution power in the constitution and uh, and enable the uh, Tamil people to have. a state of their own in which within the single sri lanka okay. they can pursue their uh, normal so, so you are saying devolution is the solution father casper raj you know the sri lankan government for its part has made it clear it was involved in the war with the ltt the ltt too must face charges of war crimes as a terror organization can we separate innocent sri lankan tamils from those who are seen to be part of a terror outfit See, I fully agree with Dr. Swami when he says that power has to be devolved, particularly with the land powers and revenue generating powers, and also policing powers. If it that if that happens immediately, that's that's too good for the Tamils for the moment. But you know, our our foreign minister was there, and he was promised that 13th Amendment plus will be implemented. And even before he landed back in New Delhi, Rajapaksha uh, had the audacity to announce that we didn't promise anything such to uh, to the foreign minister of India. See, if if, if you can't even come forward to implement the 13th amendment or 13th amendment plus to believe that the sinhala chavanistic establishment will give anything substantial to the tamils is kind of we should be living in fantasy wonderland okay. it has not happened you know and, so, and so again, there is a trust deficit you are saying that, that you are saying you can't trust president rajapaksha given that 
given that situation kc singh definitely it is the same it is singhala chavanist here okay it, it's, it is singhala chavanist it's, it's political chauvinism. ideology that is Point driving taken. the entire polity uh, you know given and, and given and that situation yeah, yeah. kc singh yeah, given again, that situation I mean, I want, I mean, are we I, again, are we please. you know the the government today made it clear that there will be no country india doesn't support a country specific resolution the fear of course is tomorrow let's say there was a resolution against alleged human rights violations in kashmir where would india stand there tomorrow do you believe it's therefore we cannot jump into this situation on the basis of emotion or on the basis because there are political pressures put by tamil parties we have to look at the larger national interest and the larger national interest may be in taking a more balanced approach towards colombo Rajiv, three, four points. This is the traditional argument given that we do not support single country resolutions. I think time for that is over. India should stop being defensive. We are not. We have not been catching people, binding them, their hands behind their backs, and shooting them in the head. And certainly, if any soldier has done it, he has been brought to justice or ought to be brought to justice. How can a democratic, civilized country like India simply out of fear? That someday this um, this may happen to you. Start taking a stand like this. They but this involves a terror group, no. which is responsible no, for the assassination of your True. former prime minister. I think the minister of state correctly pointed out the real reason was government of India continued to be uh, reticent because Raj Paksa read it right. He realized that because Rajiv Gandhi's blood was on the hands of Prabhakaran, they could do what they wanted. Now you have to make a distinction between. bringing justice bringing prabhakan to justice and killing civilians or killing innocent people what has revived the controversy rajdeep is the new tapes which have come out which are going to be broadcast tomorrow or day after showing the son of prabhakan shot in the chest at close range that's right now where in the world is it justified that if somebody is a terrorist you shoot his family you shoot civilians who are being used as a shield you use cannons to fire into a no fire zone now th this is something that Raja Paksa has got away with, and remember that Sri Lanka today is a much more auto autocratic, much more authoritarian, military dominated, family dominated country. Are we going to encourage this, or are we going to encourage them to do what they have promised time and again, okay. which is bring people to justice? Veera Raghav, K C Singh, Kasper Raj, Subramaniam Swami, and Mr. Narayan Swami, appreciate you joining us here on our talking point tonight. That video of Prabhakaran's son allegedly. alleged video which has been shown across the world will no doubt raise troubling questions both here in new delhi and in colombo and world capitals must vote against colombo at the unhrc and favor the us backed war crimes resolution on sri lanka but in the midst of the domestic political ruckus new delhi still seems indecisive and concerned about the diplomatic fallout please i at the prime minister please so open your silence and say something on this issue to calm the tamil temper the prime minister wrote a letter to karunanidhi in which he said and i quote with regard to the resolution in united nation human rights council we are engaged with all parties in an effort to achieve an outcome that is forward looking and ensures that rather than deepening human rights council and mps are demanding very clearly that the government actually vote against sri lanka when if that vote comes up next week your reaction to that it's very unfortunate that tamil nadu parliamentarians have uh, chosen to disturb the august parliament of india for something very simple uh, that uh, they have perhaps been totally ill informed misinformed by whoever who has uh, briefed them about sri lanka situation especially since none of these parliamentarians have not visited sri lanka in, in the re in the recent past how do you refute that kind of video evidence it is confrontation and mistrust a way forward is found what view on this issue will be taken will be determined as and when the time will be finalized in respect of the meeting of the human rights commission but the political fire in tamil nadu is fueled further by these pictures showing the bullet ridden body of 12 year old balachandran the son of slain ltte chief vellupillai prabhakaran allegedly killed by sri lankan forces it's part of several alleged war crime videos from the we want to know what the indian government is going to do yes. about this resolution we want, we want to know just one minute please one minute we want an answer from the honorable prime minister whether 
government of india is going to support this resolution whether it's a upa ally or a rival the demand from tamil nadu's political forces is united what crimes are human rights violations in sri lanka new delhi last days of the war against the ltte while colombo has denied the allegations the focus back home is on the stand new delhi will take with veera raghav in new delhi minakshi upreeti Meanwhile the Sri Lankan High Commissioner to India Prasad Karyavasam spoke to CNN and IBN senior editor Suhasni Heather a short while ago he discredited the channel for video claiming it was concocted Parliament has been adjourned over uh, over India's vote at the